And for just to uh, close off, I'm going to invite Maria Poulin to the stage to do a very brief uh, wrap up. And also the uh, moderators from the other sessions, I believe we are being called on to make a few remarks so uh, we can welcome them back on stage. But yeah, a round of applause for our speakers, uh, Maria Giovanna, Diana, Natalia. Thank you, uh, Diana, and what, what a day today, and so many new insights and, and impressions and research and also analysis of uh, the BEHAVE conference uh, uh, held in Maastricht uh, last year. It was really very good, and I, I think it's a very fruitful uh, collaboration between uh, the, the TCP users and, uh, and in our network. So yeah, with, with the moderators and Rebecca, I would like to uh, highlight some issues of your sessions and uh, maybe, René, I can start with you. What, what was your main takeaway of this morning? My main takeaway? Um, <laughs> first off, I thought it was very interesting. Um, and the just transition, it's, it, it's quite a difficult one. It has various pathways, and I think the most important thing that we took away is if you if you want the energy transition to work, you have to look at the system that is in place. And if we keep the system as it is, the, the, the chasms that are there might widen. So if we change the system, we might just close some of the chasms that are there, and that, 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 that might help. And I think uh, behavioral insights as we noticed, are very important in that respect because uh, you need these behavioral insights to just reach out to everyone. And uh, everyone, I mean, the hard to reach target groups, all, all the communities that are there need a different approach. And we need those insights to just do that the best way we can. I think that's my main takeaway from that. Thank you. Uh, big words. Uh, maybe there's a message or a suggestion in it to, to change the system. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, it's not just a message. <laughs> it's, it's maybe a bit more than that. But I think yeah. every transition needs a change of system as well. Otherwise, you just keep exactly. modeling on in the same direction that you're in, to my view. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Diglen, um, I remind you saying trust. Understanding and communication. Yeah. Uh, that, that's, uh, yes, I, I, it's, um, I think these are two words that have um, lived with me for a long time in terms of what I've seen it. And uh, for the, um, I think for the citizen um, and right across the system, if they can trust who is giving them the message and understand the messages in their language so that, that they understand whether it is a policy message, whether it's a technical message, I think they are the key. And um, what we found from an Ireland point of view, it is about the, um, the getting the communities educated. Um, we have three steps and my colleagues will, will that, but we always we simplify it, learn, plan and do learn in terms of from others and in terms of that's the process so um and we've taken it many years in terms of getting it down to that simple version um learn from others why they should uh, trust the information understand the, their baseline and where they're starting from make a plan of opera of projects and then do some and then go back and start again and keep doing it and improving um, I think from our session as well, one of the uh, the other parts is around technology can help in terms of getting our way towards the, uh, so, but it's not the only solution because if people fear the technology and they don't trust the technology, then that's not going, it's, it's going to be a barrier. And I think in terms of uh, understanding it, and, and the final point is that the technology is, the technology is there now to do this. The issues are the regulations and the acceptance in terms of using these. So we have the technical solutions to reach our climate goals, but it's actually getting people to do that paradigm shift and mind shift. I think that that's that's key, and that's all about behavior and behavior change. Um, 
We've seen it in our national energy smart meter rollout in Ireland. People are saying, oh, it's coming to an end of the phase, but that's getting the meters in is only the first start of the phase. It's understanding then the, the unlocking of the new types of services and how you use that in the home and understand how that's going. So we're, you know, coming to the start of the next part of the journey rather than coming to the end of the journey. And I think that's a technology and our um, demand flexibility, uh, the, the phrase that was used by the head of our electricity networks in Ireland said, this is the real hidden opportunity. Um, and I think that's if we can unlock the behaviours to unlock the opportunity, then that's where, where it can take us in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much. Adriana, what was your highlight? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I uh, definitely agree with uh, the previous two panellists. It's not behaviour in isolation. There needs to be system change. And also, we mustn't start with the technology. We must start with the user needs. And it's not about just pushing uh, certain technologies just to meet our targets, but really taking that time to understand what people really want and value is worthwhile and we need to do it. And yes, technologies are going to be the answer to everything, but where it is and where it's necessary, I think we know now a lot about how to roll it out and how to engage people with it and how not to do it. And yeah, I suppose the one drawback is engaging people with technologies early, uh, creating value for them, all of these things takes time. So I can see how there's a maybe inclination to try and skip that step to speed up the process. But I think we've learned that it's valuable to take that time to spend with users to understand their needs and to get them on board. And then we have real acceptance and real change. Thank you. Uh, so many issues I've touched uh, uh, today, and, and it's such rich material and Rebecca how and then also Adriana as a co-chair of the working group how are you going to embrace and include all this work in in, in the working group? Good question um, <laughs> well I think we've we've learned today that um, education and awareness raising is key and I think this is this is a good example of sharing best practices with each other and I noted that the TCP users invited us to the demand flexibility workshop in November. Um, so thank you for the invitation. We'll definitely be there. <laughs> and also we invited TCP users to our uh, best practices um, workshop and monitoring of best practices, um, which we hope to have online uh, in, I think, in November. Um, and so, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely be doing some, some follow-up um, webinars in the coming few months. And we'll be taking ideas back to the working group and discussing with all the members uh, how we can um, take these wonderful ideas further. Do you want to add anything? Uh, yeah, I think public acceptance is going to be a key topic in our working group going forward. And I think there still is so much out there for us to learn as energy agencies and implementers of policy and yeah, we, we just need to keep on that dialogue and always be thinking, how can we implement what we've learned rather than doing what we've always done or doing the fastest uh, option uh, to implementing programs. So, yeah, I think it's about keeping that conversation going and we will be focusing on public acceptance in the working group as a topic. And just to add on um, public acceptance and um, communities, uh, it's just kind of a joke, really, but in, um, in um, our neighbourhood, we've recently had solar panels fitted on our garage roof, and now the neighbours are following our example. Keeping up with the Germans is that's actually my main name. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, then we, we, we close this very successful day, and uh, not before thanking and thanking a lot to all the uh, thanks a lot to all the speakers of today, to uh, the panel, uh, to the participants, and excellent questions that really helped, and um, to the moderators, of course, and uh, not at least uh, the organizers and the technical team of, of 
of today. And of course, a very warm welcome that we may have uh, experienced by Cal, by them, by organizing for today. So give them a big applause. Thank you.